If you love horror at its finest, join my streaming service, Dark and Twisted TV, to watch my exclusive animated horror series, My Girlfriend Wants to Kill Me, and more. Others have joined. So what are you waiting for? Join today. Link in the description. Now on to the show. I'm sure that you've all heard of the dark web. If not, well, there's one thing that it's not. It's not a Spider-Man movie. It's an underground web browser where you can remain anonymous while searching for things such as, well, let's just say uh, you can either be scared for the rest of your life or get into all sorts of legal troubles if you're not careful. And even if you are careful, you can end up in deep shit. Me being curious by nature, as well as being what some might call um, <clears throat> a pothead, I ended up downloading something called the Tor Browser and I searched for ways to buy green, yeah, if you know what I mean. I came across a chat room where there were like-minded potheads discussing everything weed related. To be honest, it was not as scary as I was warned that it would be. Just lots of people talking about their favorite kinds of weed, what best music to listen to when they smoked their weed, what favorite munchies to eat while smoking their weed, and how to grow weed. Also, where to buy the best weed. I was interested in where to get the best weed. Now I don't want you to get the wrong impression. I usually smoke because it helps me with my anxiety and panic attacks that I've been having ever since my best friend Ethan was killed on a roller coaster that we were on at Kings Island last year. Anyways, I met this cool guy named Jazz, who told me that he knew where to get the best weed on earth, which of course caught my attention. So I asked him to go private so we can discuss things further. As we entered our private chat, I asked him if he could give me the link where to order the weed. And what he said next caused me to feel a little uneasy. He said that there was no link that we had to meet up in order for me to buy the weed. Then I told him that he does know that that defeats the whole purpose of being on the dark web anonymously. So he asked if I wanted the weed or not and he had kind of an attitude about it. So I asked him to let me think about it, but he said I only had two minutes to make up my mind, but I told him I needed more time. Then I immediately logged off the chat, and that was that. The next day, a few of my friends were in a car accident that caused my anxiety to soar. And when I got home, all I could think about was needing that weed to relax me. And I immediately began to have regrets for not meeting up with that guy on the dark web. I wished that I had at least got his contact info. And I knew it would be nearly impossible for us to cross paths once again on that chat. But I got on my laptop anyway and logged on to the dark web in hopes of crossing paths with Jazz once again. But after searching for three hours, I decided to give up and log off. But right when I was about to, there he was, asking to go private. 
I told him that I was interested in buying the weed and I agreed to meet up with him. So he gave me the address and told me to meet him later on that night and to make sure that whatever I do, to come along. So later that night, I left home and drove to the location, which made me a little nervous, seeing that it was a bad neighborhood. I had never been there before, but I had heard about it on the news from time to time. A lot of drugs, prostitution, and crime were all the headlines. To be 100% honest, I was seriously having second thoughts and came close to calling it all off multiple times, but I didn't want to make the same mistake as I made last time before the accident, so I uh, just toughened it up and continued on to my destination. When I arrived, there was a guy standing on the curb in front of one of the apartment buildings and he signaled for me to stop and roll down my window. And when I did, he asked me if, if I knew where I was going and if I had made a wrong turn or something, but I told him I was there to see Jazz. He said nothing after that. He just pointed to the back of one of the apartment buildings. Being nighttime only made it creepier. So I parked my car and I walked toward the back where a Mexican man with braids and baggy pants was standing and he was smoking a joint. Are you Brandon? He asked. So I told him yes and asked if he was Jazz. He said yes and asked if I had the cash. Then another guy joined him. Then another. I felt as if there was some sort of setup going on here, but I reached into my pocket for my wallet, took out my cash, and I just gave it to him. He then took the money, then reached inside of his pocket and pulled out something. To be honest, I thought he was about to shoot me or something, but then I realized that it was a large plastic bag with weed inside. Then he handed it to me. I was just about to thank him and walk back to my car when all of a sudden I heard shuffling of footsteps approaching from behind me. I thought for sure it was a robbery and a setup. When I turned around, there were at least 10 guys claiming to be the drug cartel and they all pulled out guns. The guys that were with Jazz took off running while he remained there like a deer caught in the headlights. Then what happened next almost made me vomit. The leader aimed his gun in Jazz's direction pulling the trigger and blowing Jazz's brains out all over the wall. I thought for sure that I would be next. I begged for them not to shoot me, wondering if they were thinking that I was friends with Jazz as the leader placed his gun on my forehead, ready to pull the trigger. That's when I heard the police sirens, as well as flashing red and blue lights, approaching. The guys took off, leaving me standing there shivering as I explained everything to the cops. Since I had no previous arrests, I was given four months in jail for buying illegal drugs and 500 hours of community service, which I didn't mind at all. At least, I was alive, and that's all that mattered. I will never, as long as I live, visit the dark web. I never used the dark web for illegal drugs, 
porn or other crazy shit that most people visit it for. I usually hang out in chat rooms just to remain anonymous and conversate with people about government, conspiracy theories, you know, your typical stuff that you don't want your internet service provider knowing. That extra layer of security just eases the mind. Anyways, I had befriended this girl named Allison, who was cool as hell, and we shared many things in common. She was the type of girl that would make a perfect girlfriend as well as a friend. She was awesome. We had been chatting with each other for about two months and things were beginning to move on to the next level. And the best thing of all was we both were from the same area here in New York City. So we decided to meet up in person and go out on a date. But she then told me that she wanted to confess something that she had a boyfriend who was overly jealous and abusive to her. I asked her why she didn't just leave him, but all she said was it was complicated. I didn't want to pry, so I just listened to her just to be a shoulder to cry on. To be honest, I really didn't want to date a girl who had a boyfriend. It just didn't feel right. And cheating never sat right with me, but I wanted to meet her really bad, so we agreed to meet the next day. So the next day had arrived and we met up at the nearby coffee house. We sat and had coffee and chatted about random shit. She was just as beautiful as I had imagined, and she seemed quite smart as well, which is always a plus in my book. After a couple of hours went by, we decided to leave and take her car. We would come back and get my car later that night. We drove around for a while listening to music and got to know one another pretty well. Then she turned down a residential street and parked her car in front of a house. Then she told me she needed to go inside for a few minutes and asked me if I would come along with her. When I asked her whose house it was, she said it was her boyfriend's, which immediately made me feel uncomfortable. And I told her that I didn't think that it was a good idea, but somehow I let her persuade me into going in. So we both walked up to the door and she rang the doorbell as we waited there was no answer, so she took out a key, then opened the door. I wasn't scared or anything like that because I always carried my gun since I have a license to carry one. So we entered, and she had called out his name. A few seconds later, he came walking down the stairs in just a towel. He told her that he was in the shower and asked who the fuck I was. She told him that I was her new boyfriend and that she was breaking up with him in order to date me. And that's when all hell broke loose. He began yelling and threatened to kill me as he began walking toward me. She tried to stop him but he smacked her in the face and began choking her. So I took out my gun and I told him to stop or I was going to shoot, but he didn't listen and he just kept on choking her. And then I fired a shot as he fell to the floor with a bullet hole in his back. And when I felt his pulse, there wasn't one. He was dead. After the police arrived and arrested us both, I figured I would get off since it was self-defense, but I was wrong. Come to find out, Allison had placed an ad on the dark web 
looking for a hitman to kill her boyfriend. And she told the cops that I was the one that she had hired to kill her boyfriend. So now you can see why everyone warns not to visit the dark web. Thanks for watching another one of my animated horror stories and make sure to like the video as well as comment. Liking the video really does help push it out into the YouTube universe. Also, if you're not subscribed, make sure to do so. See you guys next time. Dark and Twisted out.